Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and for my cards today I'm starting off with some hot press watercolor paper. So it has a smooth finish to it. Bristol smooth cardstock would probably work just as well. So I cut down two pieces to be about four and three quarters by six inches. They were six by six inch pieces so I just trimmed off the side. I wanted them bigger than an A2 card front so that I can cut them down later. And I decided to do two just because. I had ideas for more than one card. This new release from Ellen Hudson, there's such cute images and I have a million ideas. So I decided I wanted to create just kind of really simple watercolor backgrounds. So I pulled out my Dr. P.H. Martin's um, watercolors. These are the Hydrus set one and I'm using three colors here. Just the phthalo blue, phthalo green and the ultramarine. So these are liquid watercolors. Honestly, you could use um, distress ink. So you could use distress ink, distress ink refills. Those would work in the exact same way as these. Um, regular watercolors. Anything really is going to work. Um, I've had these for a while and I've never used them, so I wanted to play with them. So I just put drops in a little ceramic palette here and then I watered them down a little bit with water because they're extremely concentrated. And then using my brush, I applied clean water to the watercolor paper and then just kind of started splattering on the colors letting them mix I would add a bit more water I'm really just playing to see how these colors move they move obviously really nicely um, with the second one I pretty much did the exact same thing I tried really hard not to play with it too much I wanted them to kind of do their own thing but I can't leave well enough alone so I keep touching it with my brush and moving it around and um, picking it up a little bit with a paper towel where it was you know pooling a little too much and just just playing and experimenting so after I did that normally you should just leave things to dry you know let nature do its thing and let things air dry but I'm impatient so I dried it with my heat tool first and then I added a second layer not completely going over the first just to add a bit more color I like how these kind of move around so I added a second layer of color and then was just dropping in those watercolors again moving around with my brush and then moving it around even more when I brought my heat tool to it so it just kind of manipulated the colors a bit more so after the second layer I was happy with how these looked so I'm going to set them aside and I took another piece of that exact same um, hot press watercolor paper and I'm using the new swale stamp set super cute so I'm going to stamp both of the whale images from the set and I used my anti-static powder tool first and then I'm stamping the images with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And then I am going to cover those with some um, clear detail embossing powder. And that just makes it a little easier when I go to watercolor because those raised edges will kind of keep everything contained. Plus it gives that little glossy raised finish and I just like the look of that. So get these coated with the embossed powder. I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. And I love that this set has like extra little stamps that you can use to add to these whales to give them that extra look like there's, you know, little scales and whatnot on them. I just think that's fun. So I'm going to use the same watercolors, but I added the teeniest dot of black to another one of the wells there. I didn't even squeeze the dropper, like just touched it to that little palette there. And again, watered it down because I just wanted a really light gray. And then I would pick up some of the blues and mix them with that bit of black watercolor just to kind of meet them out a little bit more. Make them look a little more like whale colors. Although again, it's card making. We can do whatever we want. You can make them rainbow colors if you want. I, It's up to you. But I decided to kind of keep them somewhat traditional. And the great thing too about these watercolors and same thing, this would work with Distress Ink refills, no problem. Um, even if they dry on the palette, which... You'll see in a little bit, some of them do have already started drying by this point. You can just reactivate them with water. Like I touched them with my wet brush. They're good to go. So I did the one whale with the phthalo blue and the black. And then the other whale, I mixed a bit of that ultramarine and the black. And then off camera, I ended up deciding I wanted to use that little um, school of fish or krill image. So I'd stamped that multiple times and then heat embossed it as well. And then I just quickly went over it with those watercolors just to kind of mimic the backgrounds that I had created. Now you could just stamp on those backgrounds directly and heat emboss. I just decided to do it all separately because I wanted to use the matching dye and I wasn't sure yet if I was going to pop things up with foam tape etc. So I'm using the coordinating die set and I die cut all those images 
And then I'm taking just a scrap of black cardstock and cutting it down into narrow strips. This stamp set has um, a whole bunch of really cute, punny little sentiments in it, and they're quite small. So I decided to just cut the strips of cardstock down first, just to save me the time and effort. And then I use my anti-static powder tool again. And then I'm just going to stamp these sentiments onto those strips. I'm stamping two at a time because I'm going to use a sentiment on the outside of the card. And then, of course, I have to finish the inside of the card. So two strips of cardstock, two sentiments each. That's going to finish both of my cards. So I'm stamping those with Versamark um, clear sticky embossing ink. And then I'm going to coat these with some white embossing powder. And the one piece I was holding with my reverse tweezers because there wasn't much space between the sentiments for me to hold this while I'm going to heat emboss it. And then the other one, there was more space. So I just held it with my fingers. I'm going to melt these with my heat tool. And then once these sentiments are melted, I just use my scissors to trim these like apart because like I said, they're just narrow little strips. And if I'm slightly crooked, it's much difficult, much more difficult to tell. <laughs> So trim these down with my scissors and now I need to assemble my card fronts. So the watercolor backgrounds I created in the beginning, I actually ran through my die cut machine with the largest of the MFT um, A2 stitched rectangle stacks set to. So it's got just a little bit of that stitching edge all around the perimeter just to add to it. And then the whales and the sentiments I'm adhering with foam tape. So those are going to be popped up from their backgrounds. And then the little schools of fish, I'm just going to adhere flat to the card front with little dabs of my Nouveau adhesive. So I used more on the card on the right just because I thought it was cute with that sentiment, too cool for school. <laughs> my kids I probably would not even like grasp this reference but yeah I remember saying that a lot when we were younger so I thought it was cute so I'm going to add more to that one and then the other one says you are fantastic and then my card bases are just some gray cardstock for my stash so a2 size cards and I'm popping up these watercolor backgrounds with um, a bunch of foam tapes on the back of them so I'm going to pop those onto my card bases and then to finish the insides of the cards, I have those sentiments that I had stamped and heat embossed. And then I grab that little school of fish stamp again and my Versamark ink. And I'm just going to stamp those repeatedly on the inside of the card. Just to give it a little something. And especially because with the one that says too cool for school, the sentiment I chose for the inside, it says you are krilling it. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute. And then the other one, it says thanks a ton. So I stamped those little schools of fish multiple times across the inside of the card and then adhered the sentiment with that same just um, liquid adhesive and then did the exact same thing to the second card. Just one for continuity and two because it was easy. So stamped all those little um, fish on the inside, adhered the sentiment and then the final bit of embellishment I couldn't resist adding a few sequins. So I have some pretty pink posh sparkling clear mix and I just pour those right on my work surface there and I'm going to just lay out a few onto my cards here how I you know want them to go and the really big ones in the set I always like to kind of tuck those behind my main images or layers or whatever because they are quite large and I find sometimes they just take up too much space but I like them so I like to tuck them behind things so they're not too overwhelming so I stuck um, several onto each card and I'm just picking them up with my little jewel picker and using that same adhesive um, putting little dabs of that down and then adhering all my little sequins into place and place and that finished off my cards So there will be links below the video to the blog post and links to all the supplies used So you can check that out if you are interested Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye <laughs>